And so I'd like to share with you a verse of scripture that I pray will go off like a bomb this morning, that, that it opens your eyes in a new way because of the promise that is in it. I pray that when you hear this, that it hits, it hits you like it hit me this past week. I'm excited for this passage of scripture that, uh, that we're going to read, and I hope you came ready to listen to the word of the Lord. You guys ready? Amen. And so as you are flipping to it, it's in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and we're going to end up reading most of it, but I'm not going to start at the beginning. Not going to start at the beginning. And maybe you're turning to it with a page or, or uh, it's on your, you're using your phone. It's not, the, it's not the blue app with the F on it. No, we're not, reading, we're not on that app this morning right now. You can, you, you can check Facebook after service, the Bible app. Before I read, if you're currently facing a battle this morning, if you came to church and you're tired, if you came to church and you're struggling with something, this verse is especially for you. And if you aren't facing a, 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 a trying struggle right, right this morning, it's okay. This verse can also be applied to your life. Because if you're in a good place, which I hope you are, the devil knows that. And he's looking for any, uh, any way to, to throw you off track of your walk with the Lord. And so today's message, can, you can find freedom or you can learn from when an attack comes how to find freedom. So don't check out. Here we go. Second Chronicles chapter 20. We're going to start in verse 17. You will not have to fight this battle. You will not have to fight this battle. Look to your neighbor and say, not this one. Come on. We awake this morning, look to your neighbor and say, not this one. Maybe you fought the last battle. Maybe you're going to have to fight another battle. But this battle, you're not going to fight. You're not going to have to fight it. Take up your positions. Stand firm and see. Stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. The promise that is in that scripture is so strong that we have to take it, and and we have to believe in it. Because a lot of times we, we walk through this life and we, we face all these kinds of battles and, and we feel like we have to do it on our own. But no, you do not have to do it alone. God will always be with you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, it says. Don't believe that. Don't believe that devil, when he, when he tries to twist the scriptures into a way where you are alone and, we, and, and he gives you all these lies, don't believe it. Stand firm, take position, and trust in God. Don't listen to the lies. And yesterday, I went to the men's study, uh, and uh, it was Cody and Dennis and I. And if you guys are a part of the men's ministry uh, study, we're going through um, this, this study called No More Excuses. And it's, I've never done this study before, and, and it, it was very, very uh, appealing and interesting. And, and the, uh, the speaker is very... Uh, um, very good, and he, he, it, was, it was really cool to talk with just, it was just Cody and Dennis and I yesterday morning, and, and we were challenging each other, and of course, us men, uh, we got on the topic of our wives, right? But don't worry, we started talking about how great they are. Yep, it was uplifting. We have awesome wives. And it's kind of funny, when the women aren't around, it turns into like a slugfest between the husbands of, to assure that the others, that their wife is the best, right? We were going around like, well, my wife, we, we, we do this together. And it was kind of funny. It was cool because we were bragging about our wife. And that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. And now I know that I've only been married for three months and seven days, but who's counting? And there's no way that I could know everything about marriage, but really, and I'm not claiming to, but really, who does know everything about marriage, right? But I feel like our, our marriage, Kayla and I marriage, is strong mostly because of who I chose. I mean, have you met her? Kayla is a beautiful, strong woman, and she is an amazing partner. She is. 
and she is my better half. And before we got married, I remember asking everyone for advice, right? That's what we did. We were like, oh, man, we're, we're going into marriage. And, and uh, I'd always find the people, like the, the older people who have like been married forever. And um, I'm always like, oh, that would be cool. Get to be married for 70 years, you know? And I always ask them for advice about marriage. And, they, and, uh, and I realized that sometimes it's more helpful to look for advice through an example than it is to listen to advice, like to listen to it, you know? Like even Jesus uh, says, uh, expressed his love to the church, and he challenges us men to love our wife like he loved the church, but it, it was a true example. He didn't just say it. He showed it, right? And I remember asking so many different couples um, for advice, and you, you, you get the same old things, right? Happy wife, happy life, which is true. It's true. If, if she's happy, I'm happy, right? Or, or you get... Uh, but, but, which isn't bad advice, but ladies, come on, let, let the men decide the restaurant every, every once in a while. It'll make them feel good, make them feel better. Can I get an amen, guys? Come on. But I would question some of the things that some of the people would say, because some of the things they were saying is kind of scary, you know? You got to be careful who you ask for advice from, amen? Be careful who you ask. But some, some of the advice sounds good, like choose your battles. Great advice. Choose your battles. That's one advice that, that, that I always got. And uh, don't fight over everything, which is great advice. You have to decide in any relationship, not just marriage. I know I'm talking about marriage because I love my wife and uh, we just got married, so I got to brag about it a little bit. But this isn't just in, any mar- in marriage. In any relationship, friendship, you know, uh, 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 siblingship, is that the word? I don't know. But you have to decide to choose your battles. You have to decide if it's really worth raging a war against this. And um, actually being a bus driver as well, I have to work on this a lot. With students, whoo. With students, one of the kiddos, uh, I have to, you know, really... I have to really uh, choose my battles because sometimes it feels like I could argue with those kiddos all day long. Some of the parents in this is like, amen, brother, pray for me. <laughs> I'm praying for you. We, I don't have kids yet, and thank God for that. I'm just kidding. I want kids. I don't know. They're awesome. They're great. But, but being a bus driver, you ha- I have to choose my battles, you know? And uh, I was driving with, I was taking... Um, a school's, uh, where were we going? Soccer team to Sozo. And, um, and we're on our way back, and the kids had just won, and they were kind of saying this thing uh, inappropriate. Uh, they're saying this something kind of inappropriate, but they're, it was like this chant, and uh, they, could, they could change the word in it. And so, okay, hear me out. So the, they were chanting this, and the coach kept getting on them, like, don't, don't say that. That's inappropriate. So they changed the word into a more of an appropriate word, and it, the coach was okay with that, but he just didn't want to say that one word. And um, he looks at me and goes, man, I learned that uh, sometimes you just got to choose your battles, right? Like, they can do that chant, but they just can't say that word, okay? So you, he's like trying to be like, he, he kind of chose the battle in a way. He just wanted to, you know, make it appropriate, you know? And so you just gotta, you just gotta be like, like decisive. And what kind of battles are you gonna face? What kind of battles do you want to take up? But not even just that. Literally, as a bus driver, if I'm bu- driving a bus and I'm at a school to pick up kids, and I have students on my bus, if there is a literal fight, a physical fight outside of my bus. I'm not even allowed to choose that battle. If I have students on the bus, my battle isn't with the students that are fighting outside my bus. My battle is with my students in my bus. They are my responsibility. So I have to, I have to decide that, you know, they're going through something tough, and I really want to help them. But that is not my job. And that's hard. That's hard for me. And, and so we do what we can. We radio it in. Hey, there's a fight here, and we need help. But but we are not even able to. So in a practical way, sometimes in life, 
We have to choose our battles. We can't, be in, we can't choose to fight every battle. We, we just can't. It's not healthy, and we just, we just can't do that to ourselves. And the question I want to ask you today, as we learn from 2 Chronicles chapter 20 from King Jehoshaphat, is it's wise to choose your battles when you can. But what do you do when the battle chooses you? When you encounter a surprise attack, what do you do? You're not ready for it in football uh, when there's, you know, five seconds left and you're down by a touchdown and you're on like the 50-yard line. There's no brainer what they're going to do. They're going to do a Hail Mary and they're going to try and get a last-second touchdown. Does that ever happen? Well, sometimes if you're Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady, Right? Some of you, does that just went over the head, but that's okay. <laughs> but the thing that catches the defense off guard the most is when they do a trick play and they're not ready for it. Especially maybe a fourth down punt situation and they're, they're going to punt it. The team's going to get their ball. They're going to be like, yes, we finally get the ball back. And all of a sudden they do a trick play and it's not their ball anymore. Man, that's frustrating. I don't know if you like football or not, but that's frustrating. What do we do? When the battle chooses you. My title of today's message is Defending the Surprise Attack. Defending the Surprise Attack. This is what happens to Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20, who is told one morning in verse 1. And, and, and at this time, King Jehoshaphat is king of Judah, the, the lower region of Israel. And he is he's actually going through a spiritual high. He a spiritual renewing for Judah, and um, they have great momentum, right? And one day, just when everything's going good, you know, just uh, when you get something figured out, and you're like, oh, I got this, I got this, and uh, we're going to do this, and we're going to do this, and, and we got it all planned out, we got all the activities, we got all the supplies, just when they, they got it figured out. Here comes some news, the Bible says. So verse 1, <clears throat> after this, the Moabites and the Ammonites and some of the Meunites, wow, that's a lot of people, not just one nation, but three, came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army. Man, can you imagine being that person, being Jehoshaphat's uh, servant and um, having to tell your boss, your king, that, Man, a lot of people are coming to attack. He's like, no, you, I'm gonna tell you, no, you tell him. No, I like, I can just imagine them like, like fighting each other. I don't want to tell him that we're going through something good. We're, we're, we, we got a spiritual high and we're, we're praising the Lord like none other. And I don't want to tell him the bad news. It's like when someone, the, when someone asks you, do you want the good news or the bad news first? Mm, maybe the bad news first so that I can end in a victory, right? Well, newsflash, the Bible, I read it. We win. Jesus wins. Okay? And so, verse 2, some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. Okay, so they didn't take the, the, the direct route. They went around the Dead Sea. Yeah, they're sneaking up, and from behind, they're going around the Dead Sea and then coming back up to attack them. And, um, and Jehoshaphat they're like really close. Like some study says like they were like 25 miles. They were a day's march out. So Jehoshaphat has no time to, to gather up an army, especially an army big enough for three, against three nations. He just doesn't have time to do that. He doesn't, he, it's not physically possible. Verse three, alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. Have you ever gotten that, like, that phone call or that text message that, that, um, that indicated that you had a decision to make or, or something that was happening and it was happening now? Like I remember um, a few weeks, uh, maybe a couple months ago, my dad called me and uh, he, he said, um, hey, Grant, or he texted me, or Grant, I don't know. He said, hey, Grandma's in the hospital. And she's okay, thank God. But man, me and my grandma were tight. We're like best friends. And um, 
And so the minute I read that or heard that, I don't remember if it was a text or a, or a call first, whew, I was like, I took a step back. I was like, I'm in the hospital. I was in the hospital. And I just, I was sitting on the bed with, uh, with Kayla and I just broke down crying and, and Kayla just hugs and she's like, it's going to be okay, but, but what if it's not going to be okay, you know? All these questions, all these, these scenarios are running through your brain about what's going to happen and how it's going to happen and, and, and this and that and that, and it's scary. It's a scary, it's a scary place to be in. And so I believe when Jehoshaphat heard it, he was alarmed. He was, he was like, whoa, like where did this come from? He was a surprise attack. He didn't see it coming. It's a big army. If you're facing something that, that's bigger than you, that, that, that you didn't see coming, know that you have a God that's bigger than that problem. And you got to believe it. And so Jehoshaphat is alarmed. And I, I believe he's like confused. He's like, ah, why is this happening? I don't get it. Like, what if they overthrown us? Like, well, he's alarmed. But the next couple of words says, Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire the Lord. And, uh, and, uh, and I believe in this situation, there's no procrastination uh, available. He cannot procrastinate. He has to make a decision. He has to decide what he's going to do. It's like when, when you're in school and you're about to take a test, and um, you wait till the night before to study. Yeah, I've been there, done that. And um, then I get mad at at the teacher for having this test when he gave us three weeks in advance. There's no procrastination of, available. It's like when they do a pop quiz, that's when you can get mad at the teacher because it had no indication that was going to happen, right? <laughs> that's the frustrating part. So this was like a pop quiz. This was like, it was happening, and it's happening now. They are a day's, way, they are a day's march away. And I remember a, a couple Wednesdays ago, um, uh, the, the kid in, downstairs in the kitchen, uh, there was a, a pipe that burst. But it was really strange because we were all here for, Sunday, or for Wednesday night um, service, and, and Sydney was there, and she was down there at like 5.30, and she looked in the kitchen, and there was nothing wrong, so she came back. Like, there was nothing to look at the kitchen, right? And so we're just going out. By the time I get down there at 6 o'clock, there's like this waterfall coming from the ceiling of just water coming from down. And we're like, uh, how did that get there, <laughs> you know? Like, why is there water coming from the ceiling? And um, so I do what I do best. I go get Pastor Jerry. I said, Pastor Jerry, there's a problem. They got water leaking down. He goes, oh, what? Water? Why? It's like, I don't know, but there's a lot of water coming down. He goes, okay. And what does he do? He has to act now because that's a lot of water, and water's expensive, right? So, uh, and that's, if you were in the men's ministry a couple weeks ago and you didn't see Pastor Jerry, maybe you were told, but that's why he wasn't there because he acted now, and he said, I got to get this fixed because it's going to cost a lot of money. So he put over his overalls. It was very cute. And, um, and he went under the church to go find it. And, um, and unfortunately, he couldn't find it that night. So we had to turn off the water. He got it the next morning. And he, or actually, he did find it. Excuse me. He just couldn't fix it right away because he didn't have the right tool. And so he found it. We turned off the water. The next morning, we fixed it. It's all good. I say all that to, to say, this is a situation that's even bigger than that, that pipe burst. If you're going through a situation that you can't even control, that you don't even see coming, that's bigger than you, this is how you defend from a surprise attack. Watch what Jehoshaphat does. Did he say that I don't have time for all that, so I got to go, uh, that I got to go to God? Excuse me. He did say that. He goes, he goes, resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. So I love this guy. He goes, I got a problem that's bigger than me, and he's learned from a couple chapters before that we won't get into, but, but he, he didn't just wake up one day and he's all good. No, he's got experience, and he's got time, and he's, got, uh, and he's learned this, right? And so he, 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 he finds this... Uh, 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 a situation that's upon him that he can't control that's bigger than him, and, and, and he turns to the one that can set him free. He turns to the one that can set, the, set him free. So the response of the king is urgent. It says in, in verse 3 that he was alarmed.
And here's the thing. After an unexpected battle came, Jehoshaphat went to God. When you are experiencing a a, a battle that you can't control, you have to seek the Lord. You have to seek the Lord. The Bible says in 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 the spirit of heaviness, right, we put on the garment of praise. We put on the garment of praise. When we're going through hard times that we can't control, we have to go to God. Because, listen, you've you got to be very careful that you don't expend all of your energy fighting battles that are not yours. You have to. And then you don't have any energy left for the battles that are yours. And now you've gotten so tired fighting battles that, you don't, that don't even belong to you, engaging in arguments that don't even have any strength, that, that, that don't have any meaning. You're engaging in arguments that don't have any meaning, that you don't have any strength to engage in your family at home, at your work, you don't have any strength left. I'm not trying to run everything in, in Yakima. I'm not even trying to run everything here at church. I can't. I can't. If I try to run everything, I, I'm gonna be ineffective. I'm gonna I'm gonna mess up. I'm gonna I'm gonna miss some things, which I do anyways. Come on. I'm not trying to run everything in, in, in church and in, in Yakima and in, in ministry. I'm just trying to run my house. And I got my hands full. I got a wife who's depending on me. And that's my first and foremost battle that I have to take on, right? So I have, you have to get your priorities straight. And you have to decide which battles you're going to take on with God's help. You got to know when you're wearing yourself out, swinging that stuff that's not even yours to fight. And I'm bad at this. I think I get it from my mom, which I love her to pieces. But um, but man, if you ask her to do something without a question, she's gonna say yes. And it comes to the point where she has like hundred things to do in the day, and it's like, but mom, like you don't have to do everything, right? And, um, and so I, I think I get it from her. I, I'm a yes man. You ask me to do something, I'm going to do it, right? And, um, and sometimes I feel like I don't have enough drama of my own, which is completely not true, right? So I start trying to control other people. You know how you can tell if you're fighting the wrong battles, guys? If you're trying to control others, you're fighting the wrong battles. If you're trying to control others, you're fighting the wrong battles. Because you see, you can't control others past a certain point. You can only like like get them to do something for a short term, but you can't change their heart. And I have to come to I have to come to terms with this all the time. I wish I could change people's hearts, but that's not my job. Right? If you're trying to control others, It's a battle that you won't win because only God can change the heart of man. In fact, I I, I was uh, listening to Stephen Furtick uh, preach and he kind of gave this example. He said, in fact, let me give you a great little uh, line to use the next time somebody tries to draw you into some drama, maybe into some gossip or or they want you to get, um, uh, you know, they want to draw you into some drama. I heard this, again, from Stephen Friedrich, and they'll, they'll usually say, what do you think about so-and-so? We heard about so-and-so, or, or what do you think about that ministry? Or what do you think about that church? Or, or what, do you, what do you think? Like, like, let, like let me know. And, and Stephen Friedrich says this. He says, when someone asks you something like that, like, what do you think about, about this? Here's what you have to say. I don't. I don't. Once you say those two words, I don't, they're probably going to back off. And then you don't have to worry about that drama. And so Je- Jehoshaphat didn't run around looking at what other people were doing. He went to seek the Lord. He went to inquire of the Lord. And I mean, uh, Ammon, Moab, and the Edomites that's three of them. I mean, he, I, can, I can see him thinking, I can fight one of them, God, but all three of them, I don't stand a chance. It 
It's bigger than me. It's coming up from behind me. I don't see it coming. I can't do it on my own. Jehoshaphat resolved to seek the Lord, which means he involved the priests, the Levites. And they got together and he he got surrounded by the right people. He asked advice from the right people. He's not asking all his friends. He's not asking every single one of them what they think about it. This time, he's not looking at social media for the answers. He's not looking at other, uh, the worldly things to influence his decisions. It's this time he's going to the right place because he does not have a plan. He doesn't know what to do. He's got a situation that he can't control that's bigger than him, and the only thing he can do is pray. And if you're facing a battle that is bigger than you, and it snuck up from behind you, and we're going we're gonna to jump into Chronicles 20, verse 3. I'm going to repeat this to you, because you've got to know what to do. We learn from Jehoshaphat, he resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he prays. He goes, Lord, the, this is verse 5, excuse me, 6. Lord, the God of our ancestors, you are not the God, or are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the in, in, inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend. Do you see what he's doing here? He doesn't start off the prayer, oh God, I, you're giving me this too, this too big of a problem and I can't do anything about it. No, he, he doesn't start there. He doesn't start at his problem. He starts at how great his God is, how big his God is. He starts his prayer by declaring how much bigger his God is. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? God, you already drove us out here. We learned from Moses. who drove the, God got the Israelites out of the captivity in Egypt. He's been doing this for years. He's helped you in other problems. We got to learn from our experiences. Verse 9, excuse me, verse 8, wow. They lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of the judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. But now, here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade. When they came from Egypt, so they turned away from them and did not destroy them. So in other words, we listened to your commands of not to destroy them. Right? You told us not, you told us to stay away from them. We listened to you. Why are they coming to attack us? In other words. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance? Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. 13, all the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. Then the spirit of the Lord came on Jehazel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, and the son of Mataniah, a Levite and descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. So Jehoshaphat starts his prayer, and he, and he, and he starts praising God, and, and then he, he starts kind of questioning, like, like he asks for help in his problem. He goes, we listen to you, God. You're a great, powerful God. We listen to you, and now they're coming to try and attack us. We don't know why. And the Spirit of the Lord came to somebody else, Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, and he came to Jehoshaphat. And he said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. 
Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. I believe there's somebody in here that needs to know the battle you are facing is not yours, it's God's. The battle you are facing is not yours, it's God's. It's not about your power. It's not about your power. It's about your position. It's about your position. We learn from Jehoshaphat and in in the prophet uh, Jehaziel. I'm sorry, my pronunciation is hard words, but yeah. Caitlin's probably like, eh, that's not how you say it, but I'll try my best. It's about your position. They stood up and said, and said what he said. He says, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Sometimes it takes more faith to just let God be God and be great in your situation because, it, because if you ma- manipulate it, you're going to mess it up. Sometimes it takes more faith to step back and say, okay, God, it's, it's not my problem. It's not my, this is bigger than me. I can't do it on my own. It takes more faith because then it feels like you're giving up. But you're not giving up because you're giving, you're giving the power to God. You're giving it back to God. And you're saying, God, you are bigger than this and you will see me through this. And uh, as the worship team comes up, I want to challenge you to th- this week. If you are going through something, I know, I know it might sound repetitive, but it's, just, it's, it's dwelling in my spirit. I feel like somebody here just can't handle something. It's too big for you. That's okay. That's okay. Because your problem is not bigger than your God. Your problem is not bigger than your God. And I'm all over in my notes. But here's what you got to do. You have to fight the battle with the right strategy, right? If you fight with the wrong strategy, it won't work. And we learn this from Jehoshaphat. Watch this. Verse number 16. Tomorrow march down against them. So he's got his orders, okay? Tomorrow march down against them. They will be climbing, they will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeru. You will not have to fight this battle. Here comes 17, okay? You do not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to to face him tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Here we go. Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and Koratites, excuse me, stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. So they marched down with the tiny little ba- uh, army they got against this army three times the size of them. They took their marching orders. They marched down. And it's kind of ironic because if they would have fought that battle, they would have lost. If they would have used the wrong strategy to fight that battle, it wouldn't have worked. But instead, they listened to what God had commanded them to do. And Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down and worshiped before the Lord. 
Then some Levites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. It kind of reminds me of, of Jericho, right? The, the, the walls of Jericho when Joshua marched around. They didn't have to fight. But no, God gave them marching orders. God told them what they do because they went to the Lord. They asked the Lord when they were when they when they faced a battle that was bigger than them. They asked and they sought after the Lord. He answered their prayer and they took his strategy. And they were victorious. So I'm here to tell you, if you use the strategy of your own self to get through whatever addiction, divorce, struggle, pain, if you use the strategy of your own self to get through that problem that's bigger than you, that you don't see coming, it's not going to work. If you use the strategy from the Lord after you saw out the plan, it takes work, even when you don't feel like it. Even when you're so busy that you have no time for it. take the strategy from the Lord. You can conquer anything. And so they won the battle not by fighting, but by worshiping. And I wonder if there are any praisers in the room today. Praises from the tribe of Judah who are willing to use gratitude as a strategy for the battle that I'm in and magnify the Lord in the middle of the battle. And as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against their enemies and they were defeated by the angel armies of God. God is going to fight what you can't see coming. God is going to fight what you can see by sending what you can't see. God, I need you. You're bigger than this problem. You're bigger than it. We're going to go into a song, and the chorus goes like this. Holy, there is no one like you. We are praising the Lord as we leave service tonight. And it goes along the last couple of weeks when we're building our house, right? Where we're opening the doors and we're allowing God into all of our heart, not just the, the base level. Because let me tell you, when you're in the midst of a battle, it gets pretty hard to see where God is, especially if he's only at base level. But when you put all your faith in the Lord and you trust him fully, you're in the midst of the battle, it comes second nature. When you're alarmed and you're scared and you don't know what to do like Jehoshaphat here, you're like, oh no, I've been through this. I'm, I'm familiar with this. I know what this feels like. I'm turning to the Lord. I'm reading what the word of the Lord says. I am praying to him. I am worshiping him. I'm getting through this battle, not by fighting, but by listening to his strategy. Not to say that you'll never have to fight. Some battles, obviously we learn from the Bible, some battles involve fighting. But it's not always as simple as that. We can't put it into our own hands.